I know he ain't just pu He didn't just punch me I'm bleeding He did just punch me Some bitch must have lost his mind The old ass man I told him to keep his hands to himself I Don't worry about what happened to my lip man My, my lip's fine No I ain't let the old man beat me up Do I look like a Go mess around and get this old man beat up man no, man. Mind your, mind your business, man. Shut up. Everybody worried about what happened to my damn lip, man. This old man punched me in my mouth. He did this because he's old. He knows. He knows I beat his ass, man. Is he seen now? Is he crazy? He can't be built like that. Nah, I'm end up having to whoop his ass, man. I'm going to have to show him. You can't be putting your hand. Punch me. Punch me in my mouth. Yeah, yeah, he's he got to wear this ass, but there ain't no way around it. I'm sorry. You got to be the dumbest motherfucker. Man, you already know what it is. Jay Williams, let's live life, and we're back. Happy Thursday. Glad the week is almost over. Y'all know what tomorrow is. So we're gonna touch on difficult cellmates. Guys that are just hard to live with. So you don't really always get a choice on who you're going to go in a cell with. Most times you don't get a choice. Most times it's you're in a cell such and such, you go in there. After you've been established for a little bit, then you get a little more say. You might be able to get moved. Once the people get to know you and you stay out the way, they might switch you around. But in the meantime, you are in the cell with whoever they put you in there with. This person could be any size of any type of mental capacity. I've been in the cells with dudes that were truly, truly crazy. I've been in there with guys that were just stupid. I've heard some of the dumbest things come out of guys' mouths. Things that would just amaze you. I've been in the cell with liars. I've been in the cell with guys that lied about their charges. But the worst part of it all is when you're in a cell with somebody you just can't get along with, what happens? What do you do? Somebody asked me last night on the live, he said, and thank you for everybody that checked out last night's live. He said, my brother's about to do three years. He's not a fighter. Well, he'd be okay if he tells people, I don't want to fight. You don't always want to fight. I didn't always want to fight. But you'd always... You know, you don't always have the option of saying, I'm not going to fight today. Sometimes guys can push your buttons to the point that you can't talk anymore. You've said everything you can say, and the only thing they will respect is violence. The only thing they're going to understand is you going upside their head, you snatching them up, you slamming them, you doing something that you absolutely don't want to do. I don't think anybody really, well... There are some people that want to fight and that like to fight. But for the average person, most people do not want to fight. So let's get into dealing with difficult cell meets. Some of the ones I've seen and some of the ones I've had. You know how to seen it. You know how to lived it. So let's relive it. With being on a higher level institution, it's the gift and the curse. There's things that are gonna be better because you're on a higher level and there are things that are gonna be worse. The worst being, a large majority of the guys around you have homicides. Guys are in there for heinous crimes. You got your rapists, you got your murderers, you got your guys that have committed several murders. You got all walks of life when you get up in them higher levels. You've also got way, way more violence situations that normally would just play out into something small because of the caliber of people you're dealing with it gets way more violent way fast on a lower level you're going to see people go home a lot on higher levels most of us guys there are doing double digits we're not going anywhere no time soon so you're not really seeing guys get released in all my years of being at Greensville I had two cellmates that actually left and went home. 
Now this particular cellmate packs up and leaves. When he came in the cell with me, younger white dude, I didn't really talk to him much because when I asked him how much time he had, it's common courtesy. You kind of do that. It's kind of like, hey, what's up? My name is Jay. Word. I, how much time you got? Not like that, but something like that. He told me, man, I go home in a couple weeks, man. I just came over from such and such. Just got out the hole. So I'm like, all right, I'm not going to make friends with this dude, but I'm not going to do a whole lot of kicking with him. He's about to leave. With guys that are about to leave, there's a whole lot of risk you take in dealing with him. He could run up a debt, go sit in the hole. And before even the outcome of why he's in the hole plays out, he goes home. He could cause a whole bunch of trouble, leave you with it, and go home. So many things can go wrong with somebody that's got short time. So I don't do a lot of kicking with dude. I continue to do what I'm doing. At this point, I'm tattooing real heavy. I'm on the bottom bunk. This dude just more or less sleeps all day. He'll lay up there all day. He's not even asleep. He's just under the covers, just laying there for hours and hours and hours at a time. At the time, I got Will and I got Jingling living in the cell next to me, right? His day rolls around. He packs his stuff up, takes it over to the property. The following morning, bright and early in the morning, they open the cell door. I'm laying in the bed asleep. I hear the door open. I look over at it. He hops off the bunk. All right, man. Da, 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 da. I'm like, peace. He leaves. Better part of maybe 10 hours goes by. Not even a day, not two days. It was probably, had it been somewhere by around 2 or 3 o'clock in the evening. I see an old man come through the door, right? One of them guys that looks like he just eats shit sandwiches. Just got that look on his face like he has just had a hard life and just can't get over it. Like he's still stuck on something somebody did to him in third grade. He's just got the sour face, right? And I'm sitting out in the pile with my homeboys and I'm just talking. I think we're looking at TV or something. Looking at something that was on the TV. And I look over and I'm like, shit. I got one of these dudes. Dude is old to say the least. And when I mean old, like, he's not old as far as age goes. He's old body wise. The man ain't but probably late 50s, early 60s, which I don't consider that old. You know, I've met some guys 60 years old that'll do more pull ups, push ups, chin ups, lift more weights than you, run more than you. They're in great shape. This man was just physically old. Like, you've been drinking and getting high his entire life. So, like I said, we'll watch TV. I look at my homeboys. My homeboys like, damn, you got no celly already. They ain't give you no time to breathe. I look over a dude, and I'm like, oh, man. I see my cell door open. Yup, he's going to my cell. I give him a couple minutes to get his stuff put away. He's over there, you know, unpacking, emptying out his bags, putting his stuff on the countertops. And he comes to the door and goes, hey, who lives in this cell? Like, announces himself to everybody. So I look over and I get up and I go over there. I say, what's up? He goes, man, I got a messed up back. I need you to move your stuff to the top bunk. I tattoo. I need that bottom bunk. I tattoo guys' backs, guys' chest, necks, shoulders, arms, rib cages. There's times I got to lay someone out so I can use them as a flat, you know, use the bed and have them stretched out as a canvas. This is a major inconvenience, this man moving in my cell. This is a major inconvenience, them moving this man in my cell. In my paperwork, I'd hurt my back in the past. It states that I have a bottom bunk pass. So why would they put somebody in a cell with me knowing that I can't go on the top bunk? So I tell the old head, I tell Mr. Kiss, I say, yo, nah, 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 nah. I got a bottom bunk pass. They're going to have to put you in another cell. Well, I, I got a bottom bunk pass. You need to move your stuff to the top. This guy's like trying to apply his dominance, but he's not built like that. We ain't even been talking a total of 30 seconds now, and I don't like him just because the way he's poking his chest out, his mannerisms, the way he's balling his face up when he's talking to me. So I go to the control booth. I say, hey, y'all got to move dude somewhere else, man. Y'all got him set to be on the bottom bunk. Y'all know I got I got to be on the bottom bunk. I got a bottom bunk pass. Go get your bottom bunk pass. I said, all right. You know what I mean, I ain't lying. I go and get it, I bring it up there. The sergeant tells me it's expired. They issue them every six months. I said, so what's that mean? That means you need to move your stuff to the top bunk. 
Come on, man. Y'all can move to do to somebody else's cell. Like, I'll go to medical and get it renewed, but I need the bottom bunk. I got to be on the bottom bunk. I can't get on the top bunk. I can get on the top bunk. Like I said, I need it. Until you get renewed, ain't what nothing we can do. You got to move your stuff to the top bunk. So I go over there. He's already got the mat off the top bunk, balled up, sitting in the floor. I grab my mat. I throw it up on the top bunk. Don't even make my bed. I just grab it and just toss it up there. Let me get out of his way, right? I got my headphones hanging down underneath there. My TV wired up and hanging from the bottom bunk. Grab all my stuff and I move it up top. And I go out the cell. Go out there and sit with my homeboys and them, right? I give it about a part of 30, 45 minutes, right? I'm getting ready to go to child. They just call standby for child. And I go over there and this man is just mumbling. I walk in. I said, uh, look, they're going to renew my bottom bunk, man. So you're going to end up moving. You know what I mean? I can't. I tattoo, so I need the bottom bunk where you can't have nobody on my bunk. And nobody said nothing about having nobody on your bunk. I said, I need the bottom bunk. I'm mean, you know, you're going to have to get your ass up out of here and go somewhere else so I can move back down to the bottom bunk. And they got to put somebody here with me that ain't got a problem with being on the top bunk. He keeps mumbling. I'm like, no, no, no. He's saying little things underneath his breath. And as I'm walking out the door, I hear him mumbling again. I said, what'd you say? And he don't say nothing. He just goes back to organizing his stuff. They call Chow, we roll out for Chow. That night we lock in, I'm laying on the top bunk and I'm watching my TV and I got my headphones in and I can hear him underneath me saying something. This man ain't got no TV, ain't got no radio, he ain't got nothing. He's just laying down there in like complete silence, right? I can hear him saying something, even with my headphones on, which are loud, these CL20s I got on. I hear him saying something. So I move my headphone to the side, and I hear him, he gonna turn that shit. Nah, nah, nah. So I move my headphones off. I said, what's the problem, man? Hey, you think you could turn that down? Turn what down? Your TV. Man, I got headphones on, man. Well, your, your headphones are loud and they're disturbing me. I can't, I can't even think. I can't concentrate because you up there listening to all that noise. I said, yeah, man, ain't nothing happening. Put my headphones back on. At this point here, I know. Me and old man Kiss, Mr. Kiss, gonna have problems. Ain't gonna be much more that mumbling shit. It ain't gonna be much more you telling me what to do or asking me shit that just don't even make sense. I don't know how long you've been locked up. We ain't got into that because I ain't even established the fact that we're gonna be all right in here. At this point right now, first impressions of a bitch, I don't even like you. You know what I mean? Following morning, man, they call, they come by and they do count. And as soon as you know count clears, as soon as they do count, usually you'll hop back in your bed and you'll lay there until you hear him say, stand by for child. Not Mr. Kids. They come by, they shine the light in. I jump back in my bed. I lay back down. I say, no, boom, he turns the light on. So I look over and I'm like, what are you doing, man? Uh, I'm going to brush my teeth. Why, why is my face in? And get, and get up and get ready for the day. You, you, you should probably do the same. Man, it's 540 in the morning. Well, we got to get ready for child. It's 5.40 in the morning, man. They're not going to feed for probably another hour. We still got... They're not going to call us for child until 6.30, 6.45, 7 at the latest, man. They got all these buildings to feed. Well, I do this every morning. I've been doing this for a long time. You know, I get up in the mornings. I get myself ready. I ain't bothering you. You know, cover yourself up. One of the moments where you just kind of stop and you pray. Like, Lord, please don't let me kill this old man in this cell. It is 5.40 in the morning. This man is over there flushing the toilet, running the sink, clanking stuff around, dropping stuff, get the light on in the cell. All right, fuck it, I'm up, man. I'm awake. So I sit up on my bunk. I'm sitting there looking at this man, wash his face. Now it's time that I'm not going to just let this man just keep doing what he's doing because of his age. I hop off the bunk. I go over there, he stands in the sink. I say, excuse me. I take my arm and kind of not push him, but just kind of create dust beside. I say, I got to piss, man. Watch out. Oh, yo, let me finish brushing my teeth. I said, all right, well, you can stand there if you want to. So I whip out, and he moves out the way, and I go ahead and start pissing. He goes back to doing that mumbler shit. Blah, 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 blah. This will continue to take place for days. I done went to the people several times and said, look, man, y'all need to get the old man out to sell with me. I need to go back to the bottom bunk. This ain't happening. We shouldn't be in a cell together. Get this old man out to sell with me. Put him somewhere else. Before I fuck his ass up in there. Like, I ain't. I don't know why y'all did this to me, but old kids has got to go. Y'all got to get him up out of here and move him somewhere else. We'll see what we can do. You need to go to medical and get your bottom bunk pass. 
I put in for medical, man. They ain't called me yet. They said I'm on the waiting list. Well, once that happens, we'll make the move. I said, hmm. A couple of weeks have gone by now. And this dude has just got more and more. Now, I realize this also. Don't talk to him. Anything you say, it doesn't matter. If the world knows you're right, he's going to have an argument. If you say that Jesus was a man, he's going to somehow twist it into Jesus with something else. If you can say anything, it doesn't matter if it's sports related, prison related, related to the real world, he's going to somehow turn it into an argument. So it's an uncomfortable environment now. You don't want to be in a cell. Anytime the door pops, I'm up out of there. I'm going outside. I'm going to the day room. I don't want to be around this man. He was just sitting there, sit on the bunk. No TV, no nothing. Just sit there on the bunk. Smoke cigarette after cigarette after cigarette. So now when I come in the cell, the whole cell is just hot box like cigarettes. Just smoked out. Everything I own smells like cigarettes. My, bled, my bed, the walls are reek of nicotine. He's just sits in there and just smoke cigarettes all day. And I don't remember what the argument was over, but he was. I was on the top bunk and he was saying something. So I hopped down off the bar. I hopped off the top bunk, stepped on the countertop, went over to the toilet, was standing there, getting ready to take a piss. And he said something. I turned around. I said, look, man, I'm going to tell you this one time, and one time only. I've said it before, and I'm not going to say it again. You can stop running your mouth in this fucking cell. You're older than me. I ain't no bully. I ain't into beating up my elders. But you got one more time to come out your mouth sideways. I'm going to knock your ass up, straight up. At your age, you know better. So I'm not trying to hear, I'm old, I'm this, I'm that. You know better. You're doing this shit to push my buttons, right? Or you, or you think you're going to put hands on me? You think because I'm, I'm old, I'm scared of you or something? I'll get up off this bunk. I said, man, you better keep your old ass on that bunk. I'm telling you, don't play with me, man. I turn around, I go to pissing. I hear his feet hit the floor. Now, he's no threat. He could take his hardest punch in the world, swing it, and I could take it right to the face. And he's not going to knock me out. I hear his feet hit the floor. I don't flinch. I don't turn around. I go on back to pissing. And the next thing I know, a fist comes around. Boop. Punches me in my face. Directly in my mouth. It's one of those things where your brain has to catch up with what just happened. Like, I know I just got hit. I know he just hit me. But your brain is telling you, you didn't just get hit. You, he didn't just hit you. He's not stupid. He's not crazy. He's not mental like that. The man just hopped up, walked up while I was standing there taking a piss and just reached around and punched me in the side of my mouth, right? So I, I continue pissing, and as I'm pissing, I take, I bite my lip, and I'm like, and he's standing behind me, steadily running his mouth. Yeah, I done told your ass, don't make me get up all this, but I done told you what I'd do if I had to get up. You like to run your mouth, play games with me. I done told you, boy, stop messing with me. I done told you. Some bitch punched me in my lip. Yeah. My lips bleed. Lip down, hit my tooth. I'm gonna kill him. Meanwhile, he's still running his mouth, and all I can do is try to fathom the thought that this, some bitch just punched me in my mouth, right? So I finished pissing, wiped the top of the toilet seat off, flushed the toilet, wash my hands, get a piece of tissue, look in the mirror, got a lip. Yeah, he split my lip. Take the toilet paper, dab my lip. I turn and look at him. I said, you can't never do that again, kids. I understand you're older than me, and I understand you're not playing with a full deck up there. But if you ever try to put your hands on me again, I'll kill your old ass in the cell. I'm trying to give you some good advice. Don't you ever. That was your one right there. I gave you several passes on several things. Next time you ever attempt some shit like that, I'm going to forget about your age. I'm going to forget about your mental state. And I'm just going to beat the shit out of you in this cell. He went back and sat back down in his bunk, right? As I'm telling this, kids hopped off the bed and rushes for me. I didn't do what everybody thinks I did. I didn't beat somebody's grandpa up or whatever you want to call him. I didn't beat Mr. Kitts up. I grabbed Mr. Kitts by his shirt, wrapped his shirt up and ran him back against the wall and just smacked his head against the wall. Bang! Hard enough to wake his ass up. Hard enough that when I grabbed him to let him know that if I want to, I can do whatever I want to you in the cell. Don't push me and make me do this. Just grab him up and just manhandle him. That way he knows, like, all right, I'm defenseless in the cell. When I slam him against the wall, his head, fong, ricocheted off the wall, right? I took him, pushed him over the bunk, told him, now you sit your ass there, man. He's sitting on the bed looking all stupid. Cell doors pop. I go to the door. 
And when I say pop, that means they open the doors for day room activity. They pop the door and I go stand in the door and I'm still holding my lip. Will lives next door with Jingling, comes to the cell. He steps out his cell, it's right next to mine. Looks at me, a little bit of blood on my shirt. Jay, you all right? Yeah, I'm all right, man. You don't let that old man punch you in the mouth. Will, shut up, man. I ain't trying to be nosy now, but Dan should look like, like your shit leaking. He's leaking all over your shirt. You all right? He needs to help over there. He's clowning, playing games, right? My other homeboy comes down, is headed towards the microwave, and looks over at me and comes walking up and goes, Yo, you all right? Y'all in there fighting. I know you ain't in there beating that old man up. Hey, man. Keep it moving, man, before you make me kill his old ass. Keep it moving. Then I still got Will standing beside me. You sure you all right? You want me to come in and help you? We need to bang him or something? I'm like, come on, man. Y'all going somewhere. Oh, you don't love Mr. Mr. Kinston. Got tired of your shit, huh? You and that boss and old man around you whooped your ass, huh? Look, man, shut up, man. Stop talking to me. Don't talk to me no more. You're going to make me hurt this old man. Meanwhile, he's sitting on the bed with his shirt all twisted sideways, big-ass goose egg on the back of his head. I clean my lip up, change my shirt, go out in the day room, Sit there and talk to some people, waiting to do what we're going to do for the day. I see old man kids go to the control booth. A couple minutes later, two officers come in, got gloves on, call me over to the cell. Williams, what's going on? I said, uh, ain't nothing going on. Why, what's up? Did you put your hands in this old man? What? I'm not about to say, man, that old son bitch punched me in my mouth. I ain't put my hands on him. Why? He told us we either need to move him or take him to the Holy Fears for his life. Did he say he feared for his life because of me? He won't say who it is, but he's all disheveled. He's shaking. His shirt's all wrinkled up, and he's got a big-ass lump on his head. You know anything about that? Uh-uh. What happened to your lip? Man, if they don't stop asking me about this dumb-ass lip. I said, look, man, I've been told y'all y'all need to move the old head, man, but uh, nah, we good. Ain't nothing happening. Is anything happening? Is everything good, kids? I just can't. I can't be in this pod no more. I feel for my life. That's all I got to say. Y'all can move me or I call my people, have my people call up here and talk to the people they need to talk to, and I have my people get it done and get my people involved. All right, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. They packed him up and he rolled out. They moved him on. I don't know where they moved it over some bitch to. I think they put him on the other side of the compound, right? My lip was damn sure swole up for a good two weeks. When I mean swole up, not like puffy, just I could like bite it or run my lip, my, my tongue cross inside my lip. Feel that big ass knot with kids punch me in my mouth. Now that's one of them things where I could have done old man kids dirty, man. I could have done Mr. Kids real dirty. But I wasn't raised to do things like that. Even in a place like prison, I wasn't raised to do things like that. I tried to give the man the benefit of the doubt. Even after the man punched me, I tried to just let him live. I'm thinking, all right, man, he ain't wrapped all tight. He can't be, he's not all there upstairs. But I'll never forget thinking, man, knowing that he had just gave me his everything. I'm talking about, he swung that son of a bitch when he put it, when he balled his fist up and he cocked that arm back. He swung it with everything he had in him. And she said, boop. A tooth hit my lip. And like I said, my brain had to catch up with the event. You know, it's like my mind's telling me yes, but my body's telling me no. Like, it's like, your mind's like, yeah, he hit you, but your body's like, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. I'm steadily trying to convince myself, man, this and something else, uh, something happened, but I'm, I don't know what it is. There's only one logical thing that happened. I, I heard him get up. I felt his presence. I felt the punch. But yeah, Mr. Kitts ended up leaving on his old accord. I guess he was used to having his way with dudes because of his age, his mental state. And I guess he thought that little ass punch was going to do something. Did somebody had me ready to kill his old ass in this cell? Now, before anybody judges me and says, Man, why you do that old man like that? I did everything in my power to stop what happened from happening. It's not snitching when you tell somebody, Yo, I can't live with this dude. That's not snitching. You have nothing to gain but not hurting his ass. I tried to pull the bottom bunk pass. And the bottom bunk pass, since I didn't break that down, is a piece of paper with your name on it, your state number, whatever issue you got going on with your back, or it could be your knee or whatever, that states you simply stay on the bottom bunk, you do not go on the top. 
The people were not willing to work with me. Didn't really care what happened to the old man. They go home every day. They don't have to share a cell with nobody. This ain't no top bunk, bottom bunk. They just got other things to worry about. I did everything in my power to try to not put a knot on Mr. Kitt's head, right? What can you do, man? Sometimes things are just unavoidable. What I should have done is I should have slapped the shit out of him the first time he mumbled. Not that I would do that in the streets, but being locked up, you got to nip things in the bud. Had I done that in the very beginning, it would never got to where it got to. He'd have never figured he could go, go gadget, punch me in my mouth while I was using the bathroom. And he'd have never got balled up like a piece of, you know, old toilet paper. But once again, trying to respect my elders and be the bigger man in the situation. I let dude get away with it, get away with it, get away with it. To the point that I guess he thought, oh, he's soft. You should know I'm not soft. Anytime we're in a cell, I'm either doing push-ups or dips off the bench. And then at nighttime, I relax and chill out. Most of the time, I'm not even in the cell. I hate being in that cell, especially when you're going to smoke 65 roll-ups, you know what I mean, in a two-hour period. Like, man, with light cigarettes, with cigarettes, and have cigarettes burning in the ashtray. Sometimes, like I said, the only message that comes across clear is violence, especially when somebody's already came at you in a violent manner. And that matter, that in that point there, it doesn't matter if you want to fight, if you don't want to fight. Sometimes you just got to do what you So I kicked it with a lot of different dudes throughout my times locked up. Throughout my entire life of being incarcerated on and off. I met some of my guys in there. You're going to do that. You're going to find people that be like, all right, man, dudes chill. Dudes cool people. I can relate to them. I, you know, I rock with dudes. He's all right. I had a dude named Dave that I kicked it with for a little while. A little while being about nine months. Dave would end up, well, we'll get into that. Dave comes in the pod and like all the new guys. He's quiet. He doesn't know anybody. He had just got there from receiving. He's on his first major institute. Goes outside on the track, is walking by himself, doesn't know anybody. I'm not a bad guy. Dude's heavily tatted, looks all right, doesn't look to come off as like the racist type. Or, you know, he doesn't, nothing looks out of the way with dude, right? So we end up talking, kicking it. I think I introduced myself, walked up, was like, yo, where you from, man? You know what I mean? I'm Jay from Richmond, where you from? He tells me, where the hell are you been locked up? We get into the whole analytics of, his bid. <laughs> Me and Dave would kick it day in, day out. We'd meal up sometimes together. He even started working out with me and my workout crew. Becomes an everyday thing now that Dave stops by the cell, says what's up. You know, hey, you trying to throw up on this Dave? He throw food in. Well, Dave's got a cool ass old head for a celly. The old head was so chill, man. Dude stayed out the way, went to work all day, was never in the cell. One of them guys that he was a lot like I was. He'd been down a long time, and he hated being locked in that cell. So anytime that door opened, the old head would, would be outside the cell. It didn't matter if he was going to rack, just sitting out in the pod with his headphones on, watching TV. He was at work. If that door was open, he was out that cell. So that's good for Dave. If Dave wants to play the cell and just get some, you know, peace of mind and not have anybody around him, he can go shut the cell door and be in there by himself. Well, the old head stayed out of trouble long enough now that, you know, time for his annual review. An annual review is once a year where they check in on you. They call you the counselor's office, look at your conduct, see if you stayed out of trouble. Has your custody level changed? Do you still need to be on a max or should you go to a medium? Or have you worked your way down to, you know, a minimum custody? They end up transferring Dave Selly. They put him in for a transfer. He's like, man, I'm going to lose my Selly. And the old head, like I said, was was super cool. Had his own stuff. Didn't bother nobody. Very respectful. They shipped Dave Selly up out of there. He goes to another prison, right? In comes this big ass dude. And Dave is maybe 5'10", 170 pound white dude. The dude that comes in is maybe 5'11", 260, 270 pounds. And he's not wearing it well. It's not a big 260, 270. It's a sloppy 260, 270. He goes in the cell with Dave. 
We locked down that night. Dudes in there most of the night putting his stuff up. Comes out, watch the TV for a little bit. Dave's got his own TV. Next morning, I'm like, hey, how's the new Selly, man? What's up with the new dude? He's like, he's all right. He's like, but we're going to have to tighten up with some things, man. Like, I'm going to have to holler at him. I said, why well, was wrong? He's like, maybe I'm being petty, man. He's like, but he shit twice last night while we was in the cell. So you just got to, maybe he's new to prison, man. You got to let him know, like, you got to do all that when the doors are open. When I'm outside the cell, that's your time to use the bathroom. Don't wait until we get locked in a cell together and then think you're going to drop an old deucey ball right in the toilet bowl and, and stink up the cell and have me in here gagging and smelling that and turned over facing the wall because you got your big, big ass spread out across the toilet. Dave says, yeah, I don't know dude like that yet, so I don't want to come off wrong. Dave was an I do. We're going about our day. A couple days goes by. I said, you, you ever holler at your cellmate? He's like, nah, man, but something's going to have to happen. I said, wow, well, what's up? He's like, he don't never use the bathroom when the doors are open, man. You can shut your door. Like when they open the day room up for everybody to go out in, your cellie can go out and you can push the button. Your door is shut back and then you can have some privacy and use the bathroom. He's like, nah, man, I'm starting to feel like dude is trying to run me out of cell or something. He only uses the bathroom when we're in the cell. He's like two, three o'clock in the morning. He's over there making all these noises, grunting, flushing the toilet, waking me up out of my sleep. And I got to lay there and listen to him use the bathroom. He's like, shit's getting real uncomfortable. He's like, now I got to try to fall back to sleep. And the whole entire cell smells like a, a giant shit bowl. He's like, I literally feel like I'm like sleeping in a septic tank. He's like, when he's not doing that, he's on the bunk, just busting ass, just farting all night long. He's like, dude thinks this shit's funny. He'll fart and he <laughs> laugh. He's like, so I'm, I'm going to have to do something. I said, man, you better, you better, he's getting comfortable. That's what he's doing. He's, you're allowing it to happen. You ain't said nothing. He thinks it's all right. Dave comes out one day and he's like, yo, I hollered at dude, man. The dude seemed like he had an attitude. I said, what did he do? He said, I told him, like, yo, man, common respect, common courtesy is you got to use the bathroom. Do it when I'm out to sell. If you got to bust the ass, you got to fart or something, go over and do it by the door. He said, dude was like, hey, hey, hi. Right. Like, kind of telling me, yo, whatever, I'm going to do what I want to do. I said, that's all he said? And he was like, yeah. I was like, what'd you say? He was like, I said, all right. He was like, dude was like, all right. I was like, yeah, all right. Like, I know you hear me. You better hear me, right? Next morning, I think it might have been the next morning or the following morning, Dave comes out. He's got these scratches and these little tiny red marks and scuff marks all over his face, right? I don't have to ask him if he's got to fighting. I didn't hear nothing in the middle of the night, but I know he's got to fighting, right? What's up, man? You and, a, you and your cellular eye, right? y'all get into it? He's like, yeah, a little something, something. I said, what happened? He was like, man, it's like 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning last night. I get woke up to dude sitting on the toilet. I said, after you told him and everything, he's like, yeah. And he said, man, I said, what you want me to do? I got to use the bathroom. I got to use the bathroom. He said, so I hopped off the bunk. Told him, you always got to use the bathroom when we in the cell. Why don't you ever take the time to use the bathroom when I'm not in the cell? I didn't told you before and all you said was, I right, like I'm not playing with you. Dave said the man didn't wipe. The man didn't give him time to even finish what he was saying. He said, my feet were on the floor. He was. He said, the man is sitting on the toilet bowl in front of me, about four feet from me. He said, I'm in the middle of talking to him, and this big shitty bastard just hops off the toilet with his pants still around his ankle and just rushes forward at me and starts trying to grab me. I said, what'd you do? He said, I started pinging him up. He said, so he starts swinging punches. I said, so let me get this right. You in there, 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning fighting with big shitty. Big shitty, he got, a, he got a shitty ass. He ain't wiped. His pants ain't up. His junk is out. Man, his pants are around his ankles. And y'all scuffling. He's like, yeah. He's like, I got the best of him. He's like, he ended up tripping up with his pants down. And I got him and slammed him up beside the countertop. And I worked him over pretty decent, right? So what's going to happen now? He's like, that ain't shit going to happen. He couldn't get up. He's, you know, big body, the awkward. Couldn't get up from underneath the table. He told me, you got me. You got me. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. You got me, right? He says, so I let him go. He gets up, cleans himself up, cleans the mess off the side of the toilet bowl where he hopped up off the toilet bowl real quick. And I guess, you know, everything's good now. I guess we got to understand it. I said, you sure, man? It don't sound like I would have slept real well after that, man. He's like, no, I ain't sleep well, but I, we got an understanding, right? This is first thing in the morning. It's maybe 6.40, 6.45. We're standing there talking about it out in the day room, right? So we're going into the chow hall, and I'm looking over at Dave's cell before we leave, and the celly still ain't came out of his cell. I'm thinking, damn, Dave must have busted his ass up. Like, dude ain't going to chow, nothing. He's a big dude. He don't miss no meals, right? But as we're headed to the chow hall, I look over. I see Dave Selly coming out the cell. Got the typical little marks on his face. Nothing 
tragic, nothing serious. Dave didn't do him dirty. Dave didn't, don't look like he hit him with a whole lot of power. Dude's got just some little red marks, pretty much equivalent to what Dave's got, right? So we're sitting at the table, and dude is like one of the last ones to come in the chow hall, and Dave's telling another one of our homeboys the fight with Mr. Shetty story, right? How they got the fighting, 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. While Dave's telling this, I'm sitting there eating. The dude is Mr. Shitty, I'm going to call him, is standing right there in the line beside the table we're sitting at, and he's like looking down at Dave, and I glimpse up and I catch it. I see that like he keeps making eye contact with Dave. Shit's not okay. So I asked Dave, I'm like, yo, dude keeps looking, man. You sure y'all all right? Yeah, man, we good, man. I handled dude in there. Like, I took his big ass and put him where I want to. All right, man, I'm just letting you know, dude keeps looking over here. We're sitting there, and dude goes over and gets, they got this coffee in the chow hall, this hot-ass coffee that'll burn the color off your lips if you don't let it cool down. Dude fills his coffee cup up. He's got his tray with his eggs and a little fake turkey sausage and a hard-ass hockey puck biscuit on it. And he's walking by a table, and he takes that hot-ass cup of coffee. And slings that shit on the back of Dave's neck. Dave jumps up almost like if you get stung by a bee, you know, your reaction like, ah! Dave hops on the table, hot ass coffee over his neck. Boy, you know, lost your mind. And big old shit, he goes wearing Dave's ass out. Shit gets Dave upside the rail. Has now got him pinned with his weight and got him pushed upside the rail. And it's just wailing on him, right? By now, the guards have come running over. We've all scooted tables and moved over. They pull him apart. Off to the hole with Mr. Shitty. I missed the Dave, man. Dave ended up shooting me a kite from the hole. And the whole thing happened so fast. Like, as soon as it happened, the guards were on top of it. It wasn't like 10 seconds past. It was like within the first five seconds, we actually had extra guards in the chow hall, two working the door that morning. Within the first five seconds, they were on it and separating them. Dave shoots me a kite. He's like, man, I got a fight charge. Why y'all ain't taking him off me? Why y'all ain't taking him off me? Thought you said everything was all right, man. You made it sound like you can handle big shitty. Yeah, he didn't handle big shitty, man. Dave should have addressed that situation straight from the gate. He should have let dude know the rules. If you come to the cell with me, there's certain rules, certain things we do and don't do in here. Because I'm going to break down to you. If we got a problem, let's figure it out right now before we move forward so there's no miscommunications. I'm going to be respectful for you, to you. You're going to respect me. We both got to live in this small space. To coincide, we have to have an understanding. Dave waited. Didn't break it down. Had the initial fight with him at 3.30, 4 o'clock in the morning. I know dude's junk had to touch him too. Because dude's pants was down and they was fighting. His big sloppy ass was all out. So I know that he bumped him with it. He had to bump him with it. I know he probably got some poo on him. That's a big sloppy ass dude. I couldn't imagine him hopping off the toilet and everything just, you know, staying where it should stay. I warned Dave in the child hall. I said, dude ain't looking like this shit's over. Like, he keeps looking at you. I ain't worried about dude. I ain't worried about dude. She's been worried about that hot ass coffee. But these are just some of the stories of things I've dealt with, things I've seen happen. And it all boils down to one thing. You have to nip things in the bud. When you see things not working out the way they should, things not being what they should, deal with it. Don't sit back and wait till it becomes a problem. Don't wait until it, it jumps out, punches you in the mouth, or throws hot coffee on your neck and pins you up against a penitentiary rail and starts whooping your ass. Deal with your situations immediately. Or the situations will eventually deal with you, possibly get you in trouble. <laughs> crazy, crazy. Man. What up, though, Dave? So anyways, this has been dealing with, fighting with, difficult cellmates. Do enough time, you can find yourself fighting with the people that you spend the most time around. Look at that gray. Look at that gray. You can find yourself tussling, most likely, with the person you live in the same cell with. You get cabin fever. You get bad news. You're stuck around this person all day. Chances are, at some point or another, you and the man that you live closest to are going to be the ones to get into it. Like I've told y'all, a lot of this can be avoided if you just deal with it from the beginning. You don't have to be violent. You just got to lay the ground rules down. Be stern with it and let them know you're not playing. Otherwise, you end up getting punched in the mouth by Mr. Rogers. Or you end up getting scalded by fat shitty. <laughs> and you won't be the first or the last to deal with either one of them. Anyways, these jails, the detention centers, these prisons, these facilities, they're all just crazy worlds inside of this already crazy world we live in. 
And as always, y'all know what I'm doing. I'm just trying to keep y'all entertained. Are you not entertained? And like always, this is Jay Williams. Let's live life to all my real ones. And there are some real ones watching. Because y'all still watching me. Man, y'all know how we do. Salute. Man, this son just punch me. He did not punch me. Yeah, he punched me. Punch me in my damn mouth.